the first test shows the flow of the good radiator. The next four tests are Jim's radiator that is plugged. And after that, I think you'll understand what we show. <clears throat> One, two, three, go. Ooh, what is that? Nice, rough. One, two, three, go. One, two, three, go. One, two, three. You didn't have any trouble with this stopwatch. No, well, at first I did, just get used to it. Yeah, one time. All right, here we go. One, two, three, go. Seven point nine. What was the other seven? Seven point eight. Okay, we back flush Jim's uh, radiator, and we're going to see what it was going. It was doing about eight seconds before, right. and we got it down to in the range of four or five seconds. So we've back flushed it some more, and we're going to try it again. All right, when you're ready, go. Okay, these three last videos, I put them together. The first one is the good flowing radiator. The second is Jim's uh, radiator before we back flushed it. And the third is after we back flushed it. And you can visually see a little difference. You can see a difference between the good one and the, the two bad ones. Go. Two, three, go. When you're ready, go. So I guess this test um, does correlate a bit with the, the real flow rate of the radiator. The first rate, the good radiator floated about 32 gallons a minute. Jim's radiator floated about 16, 17 gallons a minute. And then we tried the, the easy test that a lot of people use, just let the water run out of the radiator. And I've always said that doesn't mean anything. But in this case, the good radiator emptied in about 3.84 seconds, and the bad radiator, it took about uh, six, six seconds. And, uh, and it's a function of when you decide the radiator is empty or not. So you're talking about two seconds between a good radiator and a bad radiator. So it's still not a very good test.